that your anointing be upon your servant and I ask you that uh, you will think through my mind and speak through my mouth and after this teaching and this word is delivered may all the glory return to you and your servant remain humble in your sight we thank you Lord for the word that you have for the Light the Bay family we thank you Lord Jesus for all those who are watching live and all those who came this morning to give you all the glory that you deserve. And uh, we thank you in Jesus' name. And all God's people say, Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are living in the most exciting times. Because this is a time that the apostles wish that they would live in these times that we are in. Hallelujah. If you believe that we are living in the last days, you can say amen. amen. <laughs> well, I want to thank Pastor Jason, Pastor Peggy for allowing me to uh, teach the word of God this morning. You know, one of the things as a pastor, you don't just trust anybody to come and speak to your congregation. Because the church is 
is one of the most important thing as a senior pastor, a lead pastor of a church. That's your baby. And you don't just let anybody come and feed your baby. Amen? And uh, I can tell you that <laughs> this is uh, a great honor. Uh, I know this is not my first time preaching uh, at Light the Bay, and, but every time I get an opportunity to come, man, I, I look forward because I love you guys. Amen? I, I, every time I, I see, you know, uh, our family here, when you guys pass by and we're having our service, I see some of you distract our service because you blow the horn and say, yeah, go, Pastor. Go away, Maker. Praise the Lord. But I don't mind. It's just your heart. You know, we are a family. And, uh, you know, I believe that this is what God is doing on this campus. We continue to praise the Lord, uh, encourage our churches, and, and win the lost. Amen? Amen. But I want us to uh, start uh, with the book of John, chapter 12, verse 32. As most of you all know that I don't preach long. I don't know if that's a good thing. I only preach uh, 90 minutes every Sunday. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm just kidding. John chapter 12. I want you to uh, turn to verse 32. Hallelujah. Woo! Now I understand there's some uh, folks that are streaming live. Some people don't don't watch us live, but um, they watch after you post the, the thing online, amen? I've noticed that every service that we have, uh, we have a few people, about 25, 30 people that are engaged live, and then after that, the number will continue to go up all the way, you know, some of our services, uh, about 2,000 people view it, they watch it. So we've never, we try not to... The goal is to continue to spread the gospel using social media. I mean, it's free. It doesn't cost you anything. The worst that can happen is people turning you off when they see uh, this bald-headed guy preaching. Say, I don't like that guy. And just, you know, <laughs> amen? But that's okay because you don't know. Hallelujah. So long as you don't know, it won't hurt. Amen? But uh, we continue to do that. I can tell you that ever since the shutdown, we have more people giving than before the shutdown. We have people that were giving now double their giving. I don't know if it's out of fear because of the pandemic or they're doing it because they love the Lord. <laughs> I don't care why they're doing it. But as a pastor, man, when you look at the numbers, you say, praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. And the uh, God's mercy has been so great since this pandemic shutdown. I don't know, but, you know, when this thing began, and, and I, I called Pastor Jason, and I say, Pastor, I mean, we're going to have to do something because they're saying, you know, shut down the church, and we're not used to doing this. I don't know how am I going to engage with our people, especially Samoans. I don't know if they know how to use Facebook. <laughs> don't tell them I said that. No, they do. Amen? But, you know, you, you have that. We're human. Amen? And, and I was like thinking, how are we going to do this? Pastor said, well, you, you continue to engage with your people. Make sure that there are some options available where people can give. And uh, I did that. We called the leadership meeting and start doing it virtually. And then uh, started telling them, hey, these are not... Um, Things that we're familiar with. None of us know how to do this. I don't even know. But I remember the end of last year going to the beginning of this year. God told me to preach a message called stepping into the unknown. That it is time for the church to be prepared to move into the unknown. For about five weeks I was preaching that same message. I taught a series about it. Remember when, when the Moses had to lead the people of Israel out of Egypt? Moses really didn't know everything that he was doing. But he had to step into the unknown, something that he never experienced before, leading the people of God out of bondage. And I can tell you that this year, it's like Moses leading the people of God and stepping into the unknown because all the things that we're doing at Waymaker, none of it, I knew about it before. It's all unknown. And I, 
I'm sure same thing here with the Light the Bay Church. There are some things that you guys had to do this year that you didn't know about. You had no idea what was happening, but you just had to listen to Moses and step into the unknown. Hallelujah. So I'm here to remind you, church, that, that it's okay to step into the unknown, that it's okay to not know everything, that it's okay when the picture is not clear. All you have to do is step into the unknown, trust God that he is God, trust God that he knows best, and step into the unknown. We don't know what's going to happen next month. None of us know. We're not sure about everything. But God designed his plan to be that way. Because imagine if you know everything. Then you wouldn't need to pray. You wouldn't need to worship. Some of us won't have a desire to come to church because you already know the end result. But thank God that he's God, that he's not going to reveal the full picture so that you can continue to go after him. So that we can continue to get onto our knees and say, God, what's going on? God, I trust you. God, I put my faith in you. Why? Because you don't know everything. Hallelujah. So, thank God we don't know everything. Hallelujah. Thank God that we're not sure about everything. But we're sure of one thing. That God holds the future in the palm of his hand. That he knows everything. Hallelujah. That's why we pray. That's why we worship. But I, I, I want to focus on just one scripture this morning. And then there's a few things that I want to touch on. Let's uh, go ahead and look at John chapter 12, verse 32. I will read from the uh, King James Version. Hallelujah. Somebody say this is good. Hallelujah, Jesus. By the way, that was a, I saw Stephanie um, on the Light the Bay 10 at 10 or, or one of the devotion. And, and I was blessed to see that. And, and uh, Brother Jeff also was on. I mean, some of you, uh, yeah, sister here, amen. I, I, I saw that uh, you guys are stepping into the unknown. <laughs> Hallelujah. And, and, and when you do that, not only it will bless your heart because you're being used, but it's going to bless everybody else that are watching, that are hearing the word of God. So I encourage you, do some crazy stuff this year. If you haven't done something crazy, man, you need to, to do something crazy for the Lord. Hallelujah. Do something crazy. I dare you to do something crazy for God. Man, the world is doing something crazy for the world. The church needs to do something crazy for Jesus. And that's something crazy going on Facebook when you're not used to it. And just speak the name of Jesus. Amen. Let me read 32 right now. It says, man, hallelujah. And if, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. Let me read it one more time. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. These are the words of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Today, I want to encourage you a very simple message. Lift up Jesus. Lift up Jesus. Lift him high. Hallelujah. See, we can have great programs. We have a lot of methods to reach people. And that's all great and all good. Those are signs of a healthy church. But nothing has an everlasting impact other than the power of God that can move. But we can only see the power of God move in that way if we learn to lift up Jesus. Hallelujah. Because it is the Holy Spirit that will do the work. And there are a few things that I want the church to remember, especially when we think about the New Testament church. Amen? See, you can lose sight of your, your goals being set for your daily living, but never lose your time spent with the Almighty. 
Amen? Let me repeat that. You can lose sight of your goals being set for your daily living, but never lose your time spent with God. Hallelujah. With all the busyness that is going on in the world, don't ever compromise your time on your knees. Hallelujah. In times of uncertainty, I can assure you that there's only one thing that can bring peace into our minds and our hearts, and that is spending time in the presence of God. But I want to encourage us today never to lose your focus of lifting up Jesus. See, we can do a lot of things for God. We can have a lot of programs for the Lord. We can have outreach and all that. I was telling Waymaker family that we can be a very awesome church reaching the community. And we encourage our people to do that. But one thing that we cannot lose, and that is our, our time spent with God, and especially lifting up Jesus. Hallelujah. We need to learn to lift up Jesus because a lot of pastors... We focus on trying to fill the church. Amen? But I discovered that Jesus said that if we lift him up, that he will draw all men unto himself, unto Jesus. So, in other words, if we want people to be drawn into the well, if we want our churches to be filled, it must start with learning to lift up Jesus. Hallelujah. So, number one, how do we lift up Jesus? Seek God for the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. The book of Acts chapter 2 verse 1. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Somebody say one place. See, there's something about coming together. There's something about standing together. There's something about being united in the kingdom of God. See, if I if I'm a fighter and if you know or you know let's see let me how do I say this if you hit somebody like this yeah it might hurt but it's not the same as bringing your fingers together and then you hit there's more impact when you when you bring your fingers together and you hit amen I've never seen a boxer you know training and they they, they, they train like this Amen? Most of them, they put their fists together. And they, the church needs to come together if we want to have an impact to fight. Hallelujah. More impact when we stand together. Yeah, you might hurt the enemy. You slap him and he's going to laugh at you. But if you hit him like this, you can knock him out. Hallelujah. Because there's power in unity. There's power when the people of God comes together. Remember, Jesus told the 500 people not to leave Jerusalem until they received the power of the Holy Ghost. The problem with us sometimes, once we know something, we think we know it all, and then we want to go on our own and start our own ministry. It doesn't happen with you guys, only in some own churches. Again, I'm kidding. Hallelujah. If you're a believer filled with the Holy Ghost, you know what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. See, the power of the Holy Spirit will encourage us to come together. The power is not there so that you can go and do your own thing. The power will come and will give you wisdom and knowledge so that you can understand the word submission, what that word means. If we know how to submit under God, we will learn to submit under the church and its authority. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So if we want to lift up the name of Jesus, seek the empowerment of the, of the Holy Spirit because we will never go wrong with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I believe in speaking in tongues. <laughs> Some folks don't believe that anymore. They don't believe that the power of the Holy Ghost is so strong. They said that only in the times of Jesus. Only in the Bible. Let me tell you what my Bible says. That he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. The same power that Jesus used to heal the sick, 
during his ministry on earth is still available today and it can heal anybody that will call upon his name. So that power has never changed. The power of the Holy Spirit is available for you. Somebody say available for me. Hallelujah. So lift the name of Jesus. How do you do that? Seek the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Seek the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. I tell you that before I received the power of the Holy Spirit or the baptism of the Holy Ghost, I was that type of Christian that, you know, one foot in, one foot out. I would go to church, but when I hear something that I don't agree with and I stop going, I would tithe only when I like the message. But the moment I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, God revealed to me that you're not serving a man, you are serving me. So long as your focus is on God, it doesn't matter who's serving the Lord or who's not serving the Lord. It doesn't matter who's being faithful and who's not being faithful. You serve God based on what God has done in your life. See, don't depend on anybody else. Don't base what you do for God on someone else's testimony and what they're doing for the Lord. Because when that person is discouraged, you're going to be discouraged. I always tell the church, Waymaker, yeah, I'm your leader. But don't base the way you serve God on the way I worship. Because there will be a time that you're not going to like what I say. There will be a time that you're going to disagree with me. And if you're depending and base your service on how I serve, you're going to be discouraged. But I want you to look to God. Keep your focus on Jesus. Keep your eyes on Jesus. So long as your eyes are on Jesus, you're not going to sink like Peter. Hallelujah. Number two. How do you lift up the name of Jesus? Worship God with your life. Somebody say worship. The book of Acts chapter 16, verse 25. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the other prisoners were listening to them. See, people heard their worship. They didn't worship quietly. Pentecostal worship comes from the heart. See, worship is a lifestyle. Worship is not music. I mean, that's just a small part of what worship is. Hallelujah. If you want to lift up the name of Jesus, we, we got to learn how to worship. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I know some 49ers, some diehard Raider fan, when they're, mm, man, they go, go Raiders! Go Raiders! Man, you shout, oh my gosh, you yell, you just give all your strength when you're cheering for your 49ers. Amen. If you're a Raider fan, you need to seek the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And if you're a 49er fan, you are filled with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> I'm going to be in trouble after this sermon, amen, after this message. I'm just kidding. Hallelujah. Boy, I'm going to need some security guards after this. <laughs> Hallelujah, Jesus. But, but we have to learn to worship. If you don't know how to worship, I don't know what you're going to do when you go to heaven. Because that's all they're doing. Worship. Paul and Silas, they locked and shackled up their hands and their feet. One thing they forgot to lock and shackle their mouth. Hallelujah. This is something very important. We have to learn to give God all the worship that we can. And worship is very important. And, and on a Sunday morning, it's something that's very special. It's something that is very important. the worship team and the team to, to come together and, and lead the people to the Holy of Holies because that is one of the most important part of the worship team. And, and, and people that are on the worship team, man, you guys have such a high calling and, and, and they are the examples for the church. Most of my leadership are the ones that are singing on the worship team and I hold them to a higher standard. Hallelujah. We have a day that where they fast, different from the church fast day. Because they need more of God, more of God every day. 
if we want the presence of God to come, then it must start from the people that are leading worship. And I'm sorry, and, and I thank God for our worship team. You guys are doing a great job, but I just want to continue to challenge you. Don't settle for less. Continue to, to move up to the next level of the anointing. See, it's not your talent that's going to make you different from other worship team. It's the anointing of God. You can have the, the most awful voice, but if you have been seeking the Lord, that awful voice can touch a heart that a talented singer cannot touch. So I want to encourage you, it doesn't matter if you're not the, the, the person that has the best voice, but seek the, the anointing of God because the anointing will break the yoke. Hallelujah. It is very important that we spend time in the presence of God. Worship is important. Every church must have a great people of worship. Hallelujah. Now, when we come on a Sunday morning, and I know we haven't done worship yet, hearing from pastor, we're going to do that after the word, but, but worship, you can tell someone that loves God by the way they worship. Hallelujah. See, there's no rule and regulation of how you should worship. There's no right or wrong way of how you should worship. All you need is your heart to be engaged to the throne of God. Worship is not something that I, I need to come and teach you, okay, or Pastor Jason must, must do a seminar workshop about. I think if you have a relationship with God, then, then you don't need to be taught how to worship. And it's a lifestyle. I tell a worship team, you can tell that you have a, a heart for God by, by the music that you listen to, by the song that you sing from Monday to Monday. Because a lot of us, we can, we can worship and become all spiritual on Sunday, and then on Monday we listen to some music that doesn't glorify the name of Jesus. I, 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 I think I'm stepping on some toes. Hallelujah. There was one point when I was youth pastor where I told one of our youth person to pick me up. And then they came pick me up. I hopped inside the vehicle. Boy, man, the music that they were listening to does not glorify the name of the Lord. And I told them, you sing on the worship team. You're part of the youth ministry. And is this the kind of music that you listen to? Hallelujah. And, you know, I, I'm not the, the legalistic type of person, but this is not some legalistic stuff. This is being holy for God. There's nothing legalistic about being holy for God. This is what the Word of God says. Be holy for I am holy. Hallelujah. We need to be separated from the world. See, we are in this world, but we are not of this world. There's something different about you. We're not the same with the world. The way they talk is not the same with the way we talk. Hallelujah. See, if you are at your workplace and if somebody cuss and they say, oops, I'm sorry. They're convicted because you're in the area. You're standing there. Then you know that you are living a holy life. But if people are cussing around you and they don't feel conviction, then you must change. I always say that. If people are just cussing and, and you know, doing something that is not of God around you and they don't even care, maybe you need to shine your light a little bit more. Because every time I'm around people, if they slip a cuss word out, they will say, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You don't even have to say anything. But that's the conviction because they see the holiness of God. They see God in you. And when they do something like that, they automatically apologize. Now, it's not about you or your Miss Holy or Mr. Holy guy. No, 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 no. It's the holiness of God over your life is the anointing of God over your life but we need to lift him high the more we lift Jesus high the more people will be drawn to the church the more we lift Jesus high the more people will come and would want to be part of the fellowship if we want people to come to our churches we need to lift the name of Jesus up high hallelujah lift him up high when we worship, worship like never before. Just, just man, just say, God, I, I surrender. Sometimes when I'm worshiping, I just feel like getting on my knees and, and just, just, just cry. Even in your quiet time with the Lord, 
Sometimes I don't even have to pray or say a word. I'll just turn on a, a nice worship song and get on my knees, and all I do is just cry. God understand the language of your tears. You don't even have to say anything when you're crying. And that prayer is very loud in the room, the throne of God. You know when you, when you pray and just tears, there are times in ministry when it's very difficult and hard. Remember the beginning of the shutdown, that's what I did. I just knelt down and I said, God, I don't know what to do. And all I did was just cry. And God started to open doors that I've never seen before. Not just spiritually, people are strong and they've been fed. I've preached more this pandemic than before the pandemic shut down. Preach every Wednesday, every Friday, every Saturday, every Sunday. Text people every day and encourage them. Text all the elders and make sure that they're receiving the word of God. And next thing you know, I see the Venmo, the cash app, the online giving, all the mail been coming in. People start giving like never before. That's not why we do it. But that's just one fruit that tells you that you're doing the right thing. Hallelujah. And, and, and this story I'm sharing with you, I'm not the only pastor that have this testimony. I believe with you guys too. But I've heard so many pastors, similar testimony. People are giving more. It is because the church has never been engaged the way it is now than before. Hallelujah. So keep doing that. But I encourage you to continue to make melodies for the Lord. See, I don't have a good voice, but I can make a joyful noise. Hallelujah. Every time I try to sing a worship team and my wife, hon, stick to preaching. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> See, you may not know how to sing or you may not have a good voice, but tell people I can make a joyful noise. Hallelujah. Paul and Silas, they sang, they worshiped. I will praise the Lord. I We'll praise the Lord, no matter what tomorrow brings or what it has in store. I know I will praise the Lord. Amen. Worship. Worship. And then last, lift him up in everything you do. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 31. So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Worship the Lord in everything you do. Whether you eat or drink, you can tell that I worship the Lord when I eat. <laughs> Hallelujah. Everything you do, do it for the glory of God. Hallelujah. If somebody tells you, man, that was a great thing that you did, you just say, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If somebody gives you a nice compliment, make sure that you give the glory to God where it deserves. As preachers, man, sometimes we get tempted because every time we preach, we have people that come up and say, well, that was a powerful, powerful message. Sometimes I feel like they're lying. <laughs> when you feel like, man, I didn't give my best, and somebody says, oh, pastor, man, that was just so anointed. And I'm like, mm, no. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But we must always give God the glory. Always give him the glory. When our churches begin to grow, more people come, don't ever think that it was us why it grew. Don't ever put the glory on yourself. Make sure the glory goes back to the Lord. When our worship team, I know when you guys sing and, and you get that more often, uh, a lot of times when people say, man, that was powerful singing, powerful worship, make sure that the glory goes back to the Lord. Everything we do, we lift up the name of Jesus. If we want to see changes in our family, it must begin with this. If I am lifted up, Jesus said, from the earth, I will draw all men to myself. Hallelujah. People will be drawn to the church drawn to you when we learn to lift up the name of Jesus. It's very simple, guys. There's no hard secret formula. Very simple. Lift up the name of Jesus. 
learn to always make sure that every one of the things that I try to do on a daily basis is praying while I'm doing my work or whatever I'm doing, driving, or I'm worshiping. While I'm driving, a lot of times I'm, I'm talking to myself, I'm preaching to myself, quoting scriptures, or I'm worshiping. I either put on a worship song and I begin to worship because I understand what this word means. If I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men to you. Amen? So I want you to practice that this week. If you haven't done it, try it. Worship the Lord. Everything that you do, just make sure that you're, you're either praying or you're worshiping. Because when you do that, then your guards are up. Hallelujah. When the enemy try to attack you, you don't need to worry because you are filled with worship. Hallelujah. How many of you are ready to worship the Lord this morning? I challenge you to worship like never before. Amen. I'm going to end, but uh, I want to let you know that after service today, I'm going to drive to Ontario. So uh, I have a funeral service to attend. And uh, I couldn't cancel this appointment because this is very important to me, an opportunity to preach and teach the Word of God. And I, again, I thank Pastor Jason. So if you don't see me a little in a few minutes, don't think that I bounce. I, I, I really need to be down in Ontario. It's a five to six minute uh, hour drive. And uh, I, I want to thank you for coming and I encourage you. Always lift up the name of Jesus no matter what. People change, everything change, government change, but Jesus will never change. That's He's right. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for your word this morning. You said that if you're lifted up high from the earth, that you will draw all men unto yourselves. And God, today we just want to focus on, on worshiping and lifting up your name, Jesus. And, and we glorify you in everything that we do. We thank you, Jesus. To you be all the glory, honor, and praise. In your mighty name we pray. And all God's people say, amen. Amen, amen. Thank you so much, Pastor Ben. Pastor Ben, before you...